Good morning and welcome to Worship in the Parish of Wargrave with Noel Hill on this Sunday morning. We are at this time encouraged by the rollout of the vaccine, but also on a day like today, we remind ourselves that the Christian hope is so much bigger than even the most marvellous vaccine. Let's begin our service by joining together in the hymn, Come People of the Risen King. together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. It's right that we should begin this new week confessing our sins to Almighty God. We say together, Lord, we've not obeyed your word, nor obeyed what's written in the scriptures. We repent with all our hearts and humble ourselves before you. In your mercy, forgive us, grant us your peace, and the strength to keep your laws. Through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God, in his mercy, will have mercy on all who turn to him. He will wash us clean from our guilt. He will purify us from sin. God, the righteous judge, will remove our sin from us and make us whiter than snow through what Jesus has done. Loving Father, we praise you for your love and grace. Amen. And the collect this Sunday. Almighty God, 
you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We had a technical issue today getting the words of our next reading up on the screen, and therefore it helps you to turn to Romans chapter 4 and begin to read verses 13 to 25. And Liz Hobden will read that to us. This morning's New Testament reading comes from Romans chapter 4, and we begin to read at verse 13. It was not through law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who live by law are heirs, faith has no value, and the promise is worthless, because the law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words, it was credited to him, were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness, for us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life. For our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord according to St John, beginning to read at chapter 17, verse 20. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus prays for all believers. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. May they be brought to complete unity, to let the world know that you sent me, and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them, and that I myself may be in them. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We come this morning, friends, to a third section in the prayer Jesus prayed in John chapter 17. Let's pray that we would be learning and encouraged by what we hear about this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that your light would shine into our hearts and minds. Give us understanding, give us encouragement, we pray, for the glory of your name. Amen. The context of this whole prayer of Jesus is very moving. It's prayed the night before he died. In the section we're looking at today, Jesus looks across the centuries and prays for us personally. Verse 20, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. He prays not for himself this time, not for his disciples, but for us. Because the gospel, the apostolic message, would be shared down the centuries, Jesus prays for all believers in all ages, everywhere. And in verse 21, he prays not for success or happiness or safety, but unity, that all of them, verse 21, may be one. So our big theme this morning is the word unity. And notice, please, first, the importance of unity. Four times Jesus prays that it might all be one. Verse 21, that all of them may be one. Verse 22, they may be one as we are one. Verse 23, may they be brought to complete unity. And the prayer is that they might be brought to complete unity as they're united in the Father and the Son. It's based on unity also with the apostles and their successors. The apostles were unique and often they were eyewitnesses and their testimony was to what they'd seen and been taught and heard. And because truth and doctrine matter, that unity is not a lowest common denominator thing. There is, as Paul puts it <clears throat> in Ephesians 2 verse 20, it's built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. The importance is because it's unity with the Father and the Son. That's what verse 20, 21 and 23 remind us of. It's not cheap or superficial, as believers are organically united to God, to the inner life of the Trinity. 
And unity, therefore, is supremely something which is supernatural. And as we're drawn more deeply into Christ, so we'll be one with each other more and more. Leslie Newbegin was a great um, missionary bishop <clears throat> in the Church of South India and a great theologian. And he put it like this once. It is a unity which not merely reflects, but actually participates in the unity of God. The unity of love and obedience, which binds the Son to the Father. Unity's importance. Let's move on, though, and look next at the secret of unity. Verse 21, <clears throat> just as you are in me and I am in you. Verse 22, I've given the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. Verse 23, I in them and you in me, may they be completely brought to complete unity. These words of the Lord Jesus point towards a family likeness among believers that is to reflect the very union of heaven itself. It centres in the revelation that Christ brought and personified. Verse 26, I have made you known to them. The secret is shared truth and a shared spiritual life. Just as we heard in verse 11 of this chapter. I will remain in the world no longer, that they are still in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. There was a man called Hugh Latimer. He was Bishop of Worcester, and this was in the 15th century. And he was burnt at the stake in Oxford for his stand for the truth. And he put it like this, unity must be according to God's holy word, or else it'd be better war than peace. We ought never regard unity so much that we forsake God's word for her sake. And the secret is shared because we're in Christ, verse 26. Of this chapter. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them, that I myself may be in them. <clears throat> we trust the same Saviour, we submit to the same Lord, we live by the same faith, and we're moving towards the same eternal destiny. Because of that, there will be different views sometimes in church life. Because of that, we can disagree without being disagreeable. As Paul puts it in Ephesians 4, verse 3, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. William Temple, who died during the Second World War, was the Archbishop of Canterbury, and he put it like this once. The way to the union of Christendom does not lie through committee rooms, although there is a task of formulation to be done there. It lies through personal union with the Lord so deep and so real as to be comparable to his union with the Father. Unity, its importance, but unity, its secret. And finally, unity, its quality. Is it uniformity that we are pursuing? No, it cannot be that. After all, in the early church, Jewish believers were different to their Gentile counterparts, but not in the essentials of spiritual life. We can be different in liturgy, music style, ministry patterns, baptismal practice, even millennial understanding, and still have unity. What offends? and must grieve the Lord Jesus, his party sectarian spirit, bickering, infighting, where one group of believers is shut out of a fellowship, unrecognised. That happens when the cross is lost sight of. What are we to be as a church? What quality should mark us? 
we should be a working model. The gospel needs to be seen as well as heard. In the first century, those who came across Christians used to say, see how they love one another. And love should mark our life together. John 13, verse 35, by this all men will know that you're my disciples, if you have love one for another. I mentioned a few weeks ago, Thomas Manton, who was at Cromwell's chaplain. And Thomas Manton put it like this one day. He said, divisions in the church breed atheism in the world. There should be a visible unity amongst believers. But let me conclude. When will this unity be complete? Well, verse 24 tells us. Father, I want those you've given me to be with me where I am and see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Where does unity find its completeness? Well, every time a Christian believer dies. Verse 22, we're tested now, but the best is yet to come. Verse 22 says, I've given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. Heaven is the ultimate prospect in Christian unity. John Wesley and George Whitfield, who were great evangelists, disagreed firmly on a number of issues of importance, and even disagreed publicly and in correspondence in the newspapers. And one day Whitfield was asked if he expected to see John Wesley in heaven. He said this, no, I don't, for John Wesley will be so close to the throne of God, and I so far back, that I will not see him. Right humility. And let's keep that prospect of heaven before us. As we think today about the importance of unity, the secret of unity, abiding in Christ as he abides in us, and also the quality marked by love to one another. Amen. We're now going to affirm our faith together in the words of the Creed. We say together, there's one God and Father, from him all things come. There's one Lord Jesus Christ, through him we come to God. There's one Holy Spirit, in him we're baptised into one body. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Before Rosie Creedon comes to lead us in prayer, we're going to sing together a song which reminds us that we come now in prayer before the King of Kings.
be our stay give us eyes to see you answer prayer this day hear us praise oh you've done we rejoice as we receive the victory Let us pray. The response to the words, loving and merciful Lord, is hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for making yourself known to us through Jesus. And for his followers who throughout the years have shared your word with the promise of your love for us. In the words of Jesus in John's Gospel, I made your name known to them and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. May we turn towards the glory of Jesus, to the outward shining of God's inner being and reflect his love so others may come to know him too. Loving and merciful Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you prayed that your followers may be one. We acknowledge in sorrow that we so often see the things which divide us rather than our unity in Christ. Give us eyes to see you in all our fellow Christians regardless of our differing traditions and the humility to learn from one another with respectful tolerance when we disagree. Unite us in your love and help us to support and build one another up so we may be effective in sharing the gospel in our many different ways. Loving and merciful Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for our nation and its leaders. Guide them in their decision making, in managing the economy for the flourishing of all and for the safe relaxing of lockdown restrictions. Grant us patience as we embrace the forthcoming changes. Thank you for the signs of spring unfolding that cheer us up and remind us of new beginnings. Thank you for the creativity and skill of our scientists in developing effective vaccines and for all those working so hard to roll out the vaccine programme. Give wisdom to those working in schools as they prepare for the full reopening to all pupils. Support them in the nurture and education of the young people in their care. Protect the police and those who work to keep our communities safe. Loving and merciful Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you are a God of justice and love. We pray for those around the world who suffer from the injustice, poverty, persecution and discrimination that mankind has brought about. 
show us the ways in which we are complicit in systems that hurt others. Forgive us, and through your Holy Spirit, guide us in your ways. Turn the hearts of those who seek to harm others. Creator God, you made a beautiful world for us, yet we do not always treat it with care, and we increasingly see signs of the damage we are doing. Thank you for the opportunity to learn, discuss and reflect through the Caring for Creation Lent course. Give us the courage to make the changes we need to make. In a moment of quiet, let us hold before God the many situations in the world we are aware of that are in need of God's healing touch. Loving and merciful Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we hold to you in prayer those who are sick in mind or body, those who are anxious, sad or bereaved. And as we pause, we name in our hearts those known to us. May they know the comfort of your love and place their hope in you. We thank you for the lives of those we have known and loved, but see no longer. Loving and merciful Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you taught your disciples to pray in confidence to their Heavenly Father. Let us join with our fellow Christians throughout the world, saying the prayer you taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
final prayer. May the Lord bless us and take care of us. May the Lord be kind to us and gracious to us. May the Lord look on us with favour and give each one of us his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Do if you are able to join us for Zoom coffee after service in a few minutes time.